Ryzen 5 is finally here and I'm here to take a look at the AMD Ryzen 5 1600 model and I'll pair it with 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM. Soon I'll also be testing the Ryzen 5 1400. Previously I've already tested the Ryzen 7 1700X but it ran into some compatibility issues. This means I completely retested the 1700X and i7, 7700K with 3200 MHz RAM and even bought an i5 7600K specifically specifically for this video. After all, the Ryzen 5 1600 stark competitor is Intel's i5 7600K, coming in at almost identical price points of 240 US dollars at the time of this video. As it is the case with the non-X Ryzen models, a star cooler is included. With this 1600, it's the Wraith Spire, which I'll also be testing. No RGB lighting on this one. As for the rest, the CPU, sticker and installation instructions. The AMD Ryzen 5 1600 Summit Ridge CPU of course is an AIM4 socket processor with 6 cores and 12 threads, thanks to SMT. 3.2 GHz base, 3.6 GHz turbo clock, 65 Watt TDP, 14 nanometer process, 3 megabytes of L2 and a whopping 16 megabytes of L3 cache, 64 gigabytes max memory capacity, dual channel DDR4 2667 memory controller and an unlocked multiplier for some overclocking fun. Unlike the Ryzen 7, I'll be installing the Ryzen 5 CPUs into a more budget oriented X370 motherboard, namely the ASUS Prime X370 Pro, although we should be good with a B350 board too. This specific board for instance features a 10 phase VRM power design, so expect me to do some overclocking with this chip. But more on that subject in a separate video, okay? Now that are some amazing results. The Ryzen 5 is a very strong competitor to Intel's i5 and i7 processors it seems. Why i7 you might ask? Well just take a look at how well this Ryzen 5 1600 does in productivity aspects such as video editing, rendering and all that stuff. In Vegas Pro 14, the video editing software I use to produce my videos, the 1600 easily beats the i7-7700K, not to speak the i5-7600K. But okay, in all fairness, the i5 isn't meant for heavy rendering, encoding and whatnot. It's a gaming CPU. So what about the frame rates in games with the Ryzen 1600? Well, surprisingly, okay not really, the 1600 hardly is any worse than AMD's Ryzen 7 1700X when it comes to gaming. So if it's 
it's just for gaming, there's no need to invest the money in these 1700X, you're better off getting a 1600 or 1600X. It makes more sense to compare the 1600 with the 7600K though, since they both are priced almost identically right now. In multi-threaded titles like Crisis 3, the 1600 of course takes the lead with its 6 cores and 12 threads, over the i5's only 4 cores. In a majority of game titles however, the i5 7600K is a tiny bit faster at 1080p that is. At higher resolutions such as 1440p, there's hardly any difference noticeable even when comparing against the i7 7700K. That however makes sense since my GTX 1070 is the bottleneck there. But all in all the 1600 offers i7 4770K like gaming performance and is on par with Intel's latest and greatest i5 offering, the 7600K. The Ryzen 5 1600 comes with a bonus though, it beats the latest i7 Cable Lake processor in image and video editing as well as rendering. But I should clarify in all fairness, due to lack of time I couldn't retest the i5 7600K with 3200 MHz RAM. That would have led to a little higher FPS than what it was the case at 2666 MHz, but not earth shattering whatsoever. Ryzen benefits much more from high frequency memory than Intel's current CPUs do. In terms of temperatures, I have now even corrected my 1700X temp readings, I thought my motherboard already took care of the 20 degree offset on the 1700X, but it apparently did not. So that's fixed now. Both the 1700X and this 1600 run extremely cool, that is with AIO liquid cooling. But since the 1600 also comes with a pretty decent stock cooler, I did some testing with it too. The cooling performance is not mind blowing in any way, but the temperature is okay. What's important is noise level when it comes to coolers like that. And I can assure you, the fan is very very quiet even on full load. The power consumption is higher on the Ryzen 5 1600 though, compared to the i5 7600K and i7 7700K CPUs. Still Ryzen is very efficient, after all when it comes to raw rendering power, it beats the i7 7700K, it has all the right to consume a little more. So as for the question which is better, this Ryzen 5 1600 or the i5 7600K, the choice is up to you really, but right now overall I'd say go for Ryzen as it offers very similar gaming performance, but simply so much more power and productivity aspects. Plus the 7600K does not come with a stock cooler included, whereas this Ryzen model does come with one. For sure I can definitely recommend the AMD Ryzen 5 1600, definite gold award. What about you, are you team Ryzen 5 or i5? Let me know, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.